Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick, and in this video, we're going to be comparing the Apple Watch Ultra and the Apple Watch Series 8. In this video, Jane and myself are going to be talking about the relative pros and cons of your Apple Watch Ultra and Series 8 for running in particular. We're really going to focus in on running and we probably won't talk too much about things like smart features or health tracking because they're very similar across the two watches. Uh, might as well start by talking about the price of the two. The Apple Watch Ultra is £849 in the UK or $799. You know, it works out about double the price of the Series 8, which costs from £419 or $399 for the 41mm watch and from £449 or $449 for the 45 millimeter watch. You can add about 100 uh, pounds or dollars to the Series 8 for cellular versions of the watch, whereas that's included with all models of the Ultra. So the Ultra is the largest uh, Apple Watch ever. It has a 49 millimeter case as opposed to the 45 millimeter Series 8 watch I have here. The titanium case wraps around the screen to protect the edges, whereas with the Series 8, the uh, screen extends to the edge. It curves you know, over the side in a way that makes it a little bit more vulnerable to being smashed or cracked if you bang it against something. The Ultra has a sapphire crystal screen, which is 2000 nits, which is brighter than the 1000 nits on the Apple Watch 8. It's also a little bit bigger, but not that much bigger, despite you know, the very big difference in size between the watches. With the Ultra, you're getting a 1185 square millimeter display area, which is and on the 45 millimeter Series 8, it's at 1143 square millimeters. So you're looking at about 42 square millimeters. Both watches have a crown and a button on one side, but you've got a bigger digital crown on the Apple Watch Ultra than on the Series 8. And of course, the Ultra has the action button on the other side, you know, a whole new button which can be used for a variety of different kind of commands or features. The one we'll talk about most here is the workout feature where you can use it to, you know, start a workout, uh, take laps during a workout, that kind of thing. Both have other key sensors like a compass, an altimeter, a blood oxygen sensor. Uh, and they both now offer temperature sensing as well, which is measured on the wrist at night. Won't talk too much about that in the review, but I have worn both watches for several nights, including an unpleasant bout of COVID, and the temperature recorded by both of them was very similar um, throughout. Because GPS, you're getting dual frequency GPS on the Apple Watch Ultra, which is an upgrade on what you get with the Series 8, which is uh, basically an all systems on mode. It uses five satellite systems at once, so it's still you know very accurate, but it doesn't have the dual band you're getting on the Ultra. The Ultra also has a precision start mode where you can see within the native workout app if you, whether you have GPS lock on before you start a workout that's not available on the Series 8. Uh, the Ultra is also slightly more water resistant it's got WR100 rating and you can use it for diving to depths of 40 meters whereas the Apple Watch Series 8 uh, is WR50 rated so it's you know, 50 meters of water resistance on the Apple Watch Series 8 and 100 meters on the Ultra. Battery life is a big difference between two watches the Ultra is rated at lasting 36 hours by Apple whereas the Series 8 is 18 hours. There are also low power modes on both watches that takes up to about 60 hours on the Ultra in kind of general watch mode or 36 hours on the Series 8. A couple of other little hardware differences between the Ultra and the Series 8. Uh, the Ultra has an extra speaker uh, and more mics on it to kind of make it easier to use for calls and that kind of thing in loud windy environments and it also has an 80 decibel alarm you can activate if you're you know hoping to be found somewhere. The Ultra also comes with some new bands. Uh, there's a trail loop which is probably the best one for runners that gets you the, the most secure and comfortable fit for running. There's the Alpine band and the ocean band is like a slightly large bulging silicon band. You can also use all the 45 millimeter bands on Apple Watches with the Ultra. This is a classic sport loop I've got on it there. Both watches benefit massively from the Watch OS 9 software update that really improved the native tracking on the watch, brought in things like a triathlon mode, a load more running stats, running technique stats, a structured workout builder, uh, and also really improved the compass app that you can now use for navigation by, using, uh, by setting waypoints and that kind of thing. All of those features are the same across both watches really and actually go back to the Apple Watch Series 4. They're both absolutely vital in improving uh, the watch as a sports tracker if you are using that native app. They're both also going to get a track mode later this year which hasn't arrived yet. Um, I think it's going to start by rolling out in the US first. So I've been wearing both watches uh, kind of you know 24/7 for the past couple of weeks, and they are you know a little bit of difference in the design. The Ultra is noticeably larger on the wrist. I'm someone who's coming from 
big sports watches like the Phoenix or Garmin Epics, and so it doesn't feel that big, but if you're coming from a series Apple Watch, the Ultra will feel a lot larger and heavier on the wrist, but it's still a very good looking watch and a comfortable watch to wear all the time. Personally, I prefer the design of the Apple Watch Series 8. Um, I like the way the screen curves to the edge. It's lighter, it's smaller, it you know, suits my small wrist a little bit better, but I do think they're both very good looking watches compared to, you know, in general, sports watches. Digital crown being larger on the Ultra, you know, it, the idea is you can then use it with gloves and that's good, but I do find it catches my skin or the hair on my arms a bit more than the smaller digital crown on the Series 8, which actually then makes it a little bit harder to turn. So I'm not entirely on board with the larger crown on it, but it's not a big problem. Once you get moving, you can turn it quite easily. Uh, the difference in screen size hasn't really been noticeable, and brightness, like, um, you know, they've got a brighter, slightly larger screen on the Ultra, but on the run, they're both almost equally visible, I'd say, in, you know, in sunny conditions or, you know, dark conditions. I haven't really found a big difference between them. It is only very slightly larger, the Ultra screen, so they've both got fantastic screens. Like, I'm not doing either of the screens down, but I wouldn't say it was a massive difference between them on the run. They both were very clear and easy to read in all conditions. So I start by looking at the, the design, what's similar, what's different. This is the 41 millimeter Series 8, and this is the 49 millimeter Ultra. So obviously it's a lot, lot bigger. I didn't hate I didn't hate it. Um, I think when I first wore it, I got a lot of comments. It was on this kind of traffic cone orange strap that it came with. Um, and I think a lot of people were like, oh God, that looks big on your wrist. And I didn't really notice it. I think compared to, you know, the Phoenix 7, the Forerunner 955, it didn't feel too big. It was only over time when I was sleeping in it, when I was um, working, sat at my desk, I would find that the, the bezel here would kind of sit against my wrist bone and it would just just annoy me a little bit so I think I do have I do have quite small wrists I'm five one so I'm not you know the the tallest person and I did find that it dug in a little bit but overall I didn't I didn't really hate that it was you know it's obviously a lot bigger the one thing I would say and this is a, a purely personal thing is obviously with the with the Apple Watch 8, you can kind of choose the bezel, you can kind of customise it as much as you want. So obviously I think this looks kind of nice when I'm just out and about, whereas this, this, the Ultra only comes in this kind of big titanium casing. Not the end of the world, but there isn't as much choice. I imagine that will come in the future. When you go on the website, it looks like there are nine different watches, but there aren't. It's the same casing and then it comes with different strap options. So I found the most comfortable was the trail loop, which is this one, the Velcro one, which is designed for runners. It's easy to kind of adjust. Obviously when you're running, you want it tight against your wrist for an accurate heart rate, but then in the day you don't need it to be that tight. So like you can easily kind of loosen it. The Alpine loop, I think I would have loved this more. I got the wrong size, didn't measure my wrist beforehand. And I found that it was just a bit tricky to get the sizing right and a bit just a bit tricky to kind of move around I did get used to it I didn't hate it but I much preferred the flexibility of this you know this loop and then obviously the ocean band which is probably my preferred one actually for running because purely because it's kind of plasticky and you know I feel like you I personally don't like a material strap against my wrist when I'm running I find them just a bit irritating just kind of that they're getting a bit sweaty and a bit gross and you can't kind of, I hate that feel against my wrist. I much prefer a plasticky kind of strap, but totally personal preference. But yeah, that's one thing that I think will come in the future. I imagine you will get the chance to kind of customize, the, you know, pick different bezels. But right now you've only got this kind of harder, you know, tough, tough one. Screen wise, I didn't really notice, you know, this is, this is twice as bright as this, the screen wise. I didn't, I didn't notice it as much between these two watches. I did notice it when I wore the Ultra and my Phoenix 7. The Ultra was so much brighter, such a clearer screen. I guess a bit more like the screen on the Epix. It was a much, much brighter screen. Um, but I didn't really notice the difference in screens between these two. They're both super bright, super easy to see in direct sunlight. Um, but yeah, from a design point of view for a running watch, I mean, they're both kind of very, very high spec watches. They're both like having an iPhone on your wrist, but this is a lot bigger. And I think if you've got particularly small wrists, then you might wanna go to an Apple shop, try it on, make sure it's comfy before you buy it because 
it's obviously a lot more expensive. Sports tracking wise, the Ultra has two things that make it a much, much better running watch than the Series 8. And it's the action button and it's the precision start. I think if you've if you're ever going for a run, you don't just want to start the GPS. You just don't, you don't want to start running before you connect to the GPS. That's like something we've never ever wanted to do. And it's something you've never really been able to tell on an Apple Watch when it is connected to GPS, whether it's connected to your phone or, you know, signal. So Precision Start allows you to see when the watch has connected to GPS. Again, Apple aren't reinventing the wheel. This has been around on every Garmin ever for years, but Apple have never done it, so we're excited about it and we're talking about it. But it, it, it does make a big difference. I mean, I, when you go to a race, you want it to connect to GPS while you're you know, waiting to go over the start line, don't you? You don't want to chance it. And then the action button. For me, my biggest bugbear with running with the Apple Watch Series 8, Series 7, Series 6 is that you couldn't pause, you could press both buttons to pause it, but that's kind of not a natural thing to do and it wouldn't do it very easily and you you don't want to swipe and be trying to kind of swipe and pause runs when you're when you're moving um and the same for stopping and it's not i mean it's not the end of the world there is the kind of auto stop but i never really i wanted the option to be able to manually pause my watch when i got to traffic lights i think running in london running in any city you're constantly stopping and actually those kind of little bits where it doesn't catch up add to you know it changes the run so the action button is so great for that because you can literally squeeze when you're in a when you're in a run you can squeeze both and it's much more natural you can kind of squeeze and stop it you can also use it to kind of lap um i used it in the i wore it for the royal parts half and i used it when i crossed a mile mark again not reinventing the wheel but it just makes it easier. It makes it easier to use as a running watch. You can also use the action button um, to just skip all the kind of, it's like a quick function. So I've got mine set up to the workout app. So if I just press the action button and the watch is unlocked, it goes straight into starting a run once it's found precision start and then you just press it again and you're off. That again, you know, it's just a cool feature. It makes getting out the door a bit quicker. You're not kind of swiping around and if you've got gloves on you can kind of do you can start a workout without having to touch the screen which it's just it's just a good I think it's a good shortcut to have and you can change what you can super easily change what that action button does in the settings so if you want it to go straight to a compass or straight to you know something else you can just click on that button and that's kind of cool that you can change what the buttons do I feel like the Apple Watch 8 feels like you're running with a smartwatch it doesn't feel like a running watch it feels like you're running with a smartwatch whereas those two little things make this feel more like a running watch um so it's a big difference they're, they're small things there but they're not insignificant things um i think both obviously have watch os 9 which had a huge update for runners um you know you can build workouts they have better tracking you can customize the screen again nothing new but super helpful, they're the same. They both have the same features, um, but the fact this has this has the action button and this has the precision start. It also has a siren, which I mean, as a female running alone, I always kind of feel like these features, you hope you'd never use them, but it doesn't offer a huge amount of reassurance, but I kind of like that it's on there. Not as loud you think, it's it's about as loud as a hairdryer, but it it carries on. So you can put it on and it will last as long as the battery life on the watch, which is cool. I think it's a cool feature. And obviously it had things like fall detection, crash detection now. So you can, you know, I like that Apple are thinking about the kind of safety in the watch. This has the siren, this one doesn't hopefully it's something that should roll out across all the Apple Watches because I think it is a cool feature. So general sports tracking features, the Ultra does have a couple of like big quality life improvements uh, on it compared to the Series 8. Like, Precision Start is a very big one, you know, being able to see if you've got GPS lock on within the native workout app before you start is great because you can get little GPS inaccuracies straight away when you start a run with the uh, Apple Watch Series 8, not knowing if you've got those GPS lock on. So that's a feature that should really be on the Series 8. I don't know why it's been restricted to the Ultra. 
you can use third-party apps and easily see if you have GPS lock on before you start a run. Um, so it's a bit annoying that it's only on the Ultra, but it is a nice quality of life improvement for sure. But in general, the bigger one is the extra button on the watch, like being able to use it to quickly start a workout, pause a workout by pressing both, take a lap by just pressing the action button. Although that is quite hard to do on the run. Like if you're taking a lap, You've got to put, position your fingers in the right way when you just hit the action button without also hitting the other button because then that pauses the workout which i did do a few times but yeah in general an extra button you know we've wanted it on apple watch for years having a lap button is very handy and it shouldn't have taken this long to arrive but it is a significant improvement in the quality of life for runners compared to what you get on the series 8 without the button on that side otherwise the sport tracking experience is largely the same in terms of what you actually get on the watch like the native tracking is now much better thanks to the watch os 9 update having things like split pace segment pace the structured workout builder that's all great running power and elevation stats on the wrist is is quite nice i don't use running power very much but i've been running up in the hills in scotland recently and having that dedicated elevation screen is, is quite nice to look at i enjoy that and then the other thing that's the same across both watches is you can link up a heart rate monitor with both of them but not external power meters and things like that to use with the native app again you can use some third-party apps like work outdoors or you know strides app with the stride iPod to get around that but again the experience there is pretty much the same so really the big you know upgrade with the Apple Watch Ultra is that precision start mode and the extra button both of which are pretty handy. So I'd say that both the Apple Watch Ultra and the Series 8 are really good on kind of overall GPS tracks of the watch. There's some quirks of pacing we'll come on to, but in terms of the actual you know, tracks you get and the overall distance recorded, they're both very good. You know, you'd expect that. You've got a dual band watch and essentially an all systems on satellite tracking watch here and they are quite close. The Ultra is a little bit better at times. So what you're gonna get a bit less of with the dual band is slightly less smoothing around corners and slightly more wiggling, which is you know a realistic wiggling, put it that way. So I've got this run here, I'm gonna show you where I've been up in the, like I say, in the hills in Scotland and going through trails, there'll be a lot of like, little zigzagging around kind of like heather bushes and that kind of thing. And the Apple Watch Series 8 will smooth a lot of that out, um, which means your overall distance is slightly shorter. Uh, and when I went under an underpass using this watch, it did kind of miss the fact that I can you know, go around the fence and come back, you know, little wiggles and things like that that are what you do on runs like that, but will be smoothed out by this watch. It's just trying to create, you know, a smoother GPS track. So the overall distance though will end up almost exactly the same. It's really not a huge deal breaker in terms of distance and track accuracy, but you are gonna get slightly better, more realistic tracks from the Apple Watch Ultra. Also, I've used the Apple Watch Ultra for two marathons in London and Berlin. You know, London's a really tough marathon for um, GPS with the high buildings around Canary Wharf in particular. And again, it produced really good GPS tracks, actually outperformed the Garmin Epix 2 at London um, in terms of the overall distance and the way it was pacing around those high buildings. Because it uses the Apple Watch pedometer as well, which can help when you go for an underpass to get more accurate distance recording when the GPS starts to really go to pot. Ultra is really good but the Series 8 is also very good. Now that's an overall GPS track. Now both have some slight interesting, both struggle a bit more with instant pacing. There's an instant, there's a real quirk here, which maybe someone could explain to me, but when you start a run, your split pace, so the first kilometer pace uh, and the average pace are not the same. And they, they should be the same, right? As far as I can work out, you know, your first split, the average pace for your entire run will be the same as that, but they never are. And that really freaks me out. Uh, um, yeah, maybe maybe I'm just being dumb there, but they, it's always the same on like my Garmin and when I use work outdoors on the Apple Watch. And then at the start of each split or segment, it takes a little bit of while for the average pace for that split or segment to you know, even out and be accurate. It's often reads a bit slow at first. Um, so actually pacing with these two watches can sometimes be a bit trickier and harder than with the Garmin Epix, which is very good on that front. And um, the other thing to say is they're, neither of them have been that great on the track for me. They've been about as good as you expect from a GPS watch. It's very hard to read a 400 meter you know, loop that well, but with the track mode coming, you'd expect that to be fixed. And on the track, obviously, you know how far you've run. You've, you've got the track of all the lines there. So overall, the Ultra is a little bit better on GPS, but it's quite marginal. And even as someone like myself, I am very obsessive about GPS. I really worry about it. I usually, you know, pace a lot of workouts and races. Um, I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker of an upgrade because the Series 8 is still very good on GPS. From a GPS point of view, Apple said this is the most accurate GPS they've ever put in a watch. Um, I've tested it. I'll let Nick talk about GPS more because Nick is the guy to talk to about GPS. But I have tested it on the track with the Phoenix 7 and they are, I mean, like 100 metres kind of out. So that's pretty damn accurate, I think, from my point of view. Um, pretty much spot on. I was impressed with the GPS in this. I was impressed at how quickly it connected to GPS. Um, yeah, I was 
I was impressed. Our accuracy is quite a simple one. The actual Series 8 wins this quite comfortably for me. The uh, Series 8 follows on from the last few versions of the Apple Watch and being among the best optical heart rate monitors I've tested. Uh, it's a small watch, sits very snugly against the wrist. It's clearly got a good optical heart rate sensor in there and it does do very well during runs of all types. Now, you still will have dropouts. I'd say on most runs, I'd have at least one dropout and sometimes quite a long one uh, where it doesn't read anything at all. But, you know, it's still when it is reading, it does read very accurately, even on like sharp intervals with spikes in heart rate and that kind of thing. The Ultra is pretty good, but it's worse. I think it's because it's a bigger watch, it doesn't sit as snugly against the wrist as the Series 8. So you just, I just had quite a lot of dropouts with the Ultra. Say so long term, I'd probably connect a heart rate chest trap to both of these watches for better heart rate accuracy, but I'd say I'd have done that and definitely would do that with the Ultra in particular because it doesn't read quite as accurately as the smaller Series 8. The battery life. Is a lot better on this still not anywhere near as good as a garmin but it's a lot better which if you're doing something like a marathon you want to leave the house at 7 a.m get to the start line leave it connected to gps for a while run for three four five hours and still have battery life to go to the pub and look at your race afterwards and it not just be dead on your wrist so I would trust this a lot more. So battery life is obviously a big upgrade on the Apple Watch Ultra. I found that both of these watches outperform their listed battery life. Apple's always quite conservative with the listing you know, 18 hours, 36 hours. I'd say you're comfortably getting through 24 hours with the Series 8 and 48 hours with the Apple Watch Ultra. And that includes running you know, during those days for an hour or more. I've actually done two marathons, like I say, with the Ultra and it's lasted me a 48 hour period quite comfortably even with those marathons in it. I would say it's a pretty big quality of life improvement with the Ultra having to charge it every two days. Like if you're gonna use the you know sleep tracking and the wrist temperature kind of sensing at night, you need to find a point in the day to, do, to charge the watch and with the Series 8, you only have one day to do that. So every single day trying to find a slot where I can pop the watch on its charger for you know half an hour, an hour to get enough juice is harder than having to find that slot over the course of two days, which is with the Apple Watch Ultra. Long term, I would probably charge the Series 8 every night just to make sure it lasted me throughout the day um, and I'd lose the sleep tracking. Whereas with the Ultra, it's never really been that inconvenient to find a point to charge it within that two day period. Still well short of what you get with sport watches, obviously, but you know it's the price you pay for having so many kind of battery hungry features crammed into fairly small watches. Another time it's a big quality of life is when you're doing something like a marathon. So with the Ultra, I could charge it the day before, wear it overnight to track my sleep, get up in the morning, go and do the marathon, have no concerns about battery life. Whereas with the Apple Watch Series 8, I would always charge it you know, right up until the moment I left for the marathon um, to make sure it lasted that activity. So, so yeah, that is, yeah, again, if you're doing long individual activities, the Ultra will be a clear step up, especially if you're looking at triathlons and that kind of thing. I don't use Music Watch, but again, anytime, anytime you use more power hungry features, the difference between the watches will be magnified. So if you are someone who listens to music on the run, the Ultra will, will be a big, again, a big step up. So the verdict, which should you buy? It's a really tricky, it's a tricky one. I think that the Apple Watch 8 is more comfortable for day-to-day -day wear, 100%, it's smaller, it's more comfortable, it sits nicely on the wrist. But it does still feel like a smart watch that you're running with. I wouldn't use it for a race day, I wouldn't trust the battery life, but I would mainly trust it on race day for the action button and for the precision start because you want to be able to lap on a, on a race and you want to be able to pause your watch and you want to be able to trust in the GPS, which I think I would trust this watch on my wrist a lot more than the Series 8. But that said, if you're not doing serious training, if you want to buy an Apple Watch to connect to your Peloton, to go for a couple of rounds in the gym, to track your steps, to close your rings, to just look at your overall health. This still has, from a running perspective, everything this has without those buttons and with, you know, a, a shorter battery life. But it's still, you know, you're still going to get everything out of this watch if you're not doing, if you're not using it for serious training. If you are using it for serious training, I'd probably buy the Ultra. But if you already own a Garmin and you're going to use your Garmin for your runs and you want an Apple Watch to wear day to day, save your money and buy the Apple Watch 8. So I think the verdict is a really tough one when you're picking between these two watches. Um, they're both really solid, you know, sporty smart watches that have pretty, you know, great native tracking now, but you can still upgrade it further with the with apps like Work Outdoors uh, that can bring things like maps into it and a bit more sports watch style customization. Uh, and they both do a really good job of it. I've been wearing both of them for the last two weeks. I would say if I was going to wear one of these two long term, I'd still prefer it to be the Ultra. The, um, 
the quality of life improvements from the button, the extra battery life, the precision start GPS, which is a daily annoyance. If you run every day and you're kind of a bit worried whether you've got GPS lock on, it's a bit annoying. Although again, you can use third party apps. Um, I'd say, yeah, it is the one I would pick if I had both of them available to me, I wasn't really factoring in cost. Like, I don't like the design quite as much as the Series 8, but I still think it's a really nice design, and in general, I think it's an improvement on the classic sports watch design. Uh, also, the dual-band GPS is a small improvement, but again, it's not a massive one. It's... However, looking at the price, you've got to factor that in as well. If you're buying it right now, it's hard to not just buy the Series 8, I think. I would be getting this watch, you know, at half the price for what is a very good watch, a nice really nice looking watch, smaller, sleeker than the Ultra, and it's a watch which does now offer excellent native sports tracking and the same apps and smart features and health tracking features as the as the Ultra. And, you, and kind of all the advantages of the Ultra you can kind of, you know, take care of with the Series 8 for a few ways. Like if you are gonna charge it every night and not really care about the sleep tracking, then the battery life becomes less of a factor. If you use a third party app like Work Outdoors, you'll have things like being able to see GPS lock on before you start, and you get things like button commands during run as well, so you can work out a way to set up a lap button on the watch. You know, you do then knock out a few of the Ultra's key advantages. It's all it's better to have it all integrated seamlessly into the watch like it is on the Ultra, but you know, it's not that hard to knock out knock a few of those kinks out. You're never going to have, you know, as rugged a design and as long-lasting a design with the Series 8, but you are paying a huge premium to get those. Um, you know, like I say, it's double the price and the Series 8 is so good, that would probably be the one I'd get in terms of value if buying them now. But if money's no object, you just want the best possible Apple Watch to use for running, then it would be the Apple Watch Ultra. So that is it guys, that's our comparison of the Ultra and the Series 8. Uh, let us know what you think of these watches. Are you very excited by the Apple Watch Ultra? Is that the watch you're going to use now for all your sports tracking go forward? Or are you sticking with a Garmin or you know other sports watch? Let us know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.